Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Rafina Antonetti. And today's title message is Future Plans. Now, I believe everyone has a plan for their future, whether it's getting married, having children, going to college, starting a business, being a sports figure, teacher, lawyer, etc. There are so many things that we can plan for. Now, if you came out of a background and lifestyle like I came out of, then you probably even wondered if there was a future for you. I know one day I was so depressed over what I was doing and the people I was hurting that I turned to God and said, please don't let me die in this condition. Don't let my family hear that they found my body somewhere. Don't let me die in shame. Now I knew about God, but I did not know God. But he knew me. And I love what the Word of God says. I alone know the plans I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about a future you hope for. Now, when we see the word prosper or prosperity, what is the first thing that we think of? Right. Money, riches, fortune. We are conditioned to think that prosperity only means financial gain. But another translation, the King James translation says, um, and this is Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So in this verse of scripture, the word prosperity is peace, shalom. Well, happy, welfare, your health and mental health, rest. So God is more concerned with us having peace in our future than money. Why? Because he says in Matthew 6, 32, for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. What things? Food, drink, clothes, cars, houses, money. But he says, don't be anxious about these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So on my computer desktop, I have this scripture written, this particular scripture. And around it, I have pictures of my plans and desires, a new car, a new home, a new studio, how to learn animation, my Mary Kay business, my life insurance business. But before all these things stands a picture of a big Bible. Because to have any of these things and don't have the peace of God's word in my life, it means absolutely nothing. God's peace for us is the greatest treasure we can possess. Knowing that there is someone that looks out for us and wants us to do good for us all the time, that wants to do good for us all the time, and to give us a future in spite of what we see or who we are. A future not only the one that he has set aside for us, but also when we delight ourselves in him, he gives us the desires of our heart. But what should the desires of our heart be? It should be whatever he desires for us, right? Let your will be done, not my will, Lord. So to get there, I have to believe more and trust more. Is this difficult? Absolutely. Because things and people that I can actually see and hear can cause so much pain And even the leadership of this country has made us even wonder what is in our future. Do we even have a future? What kind of future are we going for here? And people closest to you can discourage and disappoint you. But the more that I read his word and look into the pages of his heart, I can hear and see differently. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, 21, whether you turn to the right or to the left, 
your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. I love that. I really love knowing that whatever my plans are, God sees ahead and he tells me which way to go. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. That's absolutely awesome. That our steps are ordered from the Lord. All we have to do is listen and wait. Listen to what? Well, God's voice, of course. We need to stop expecting God to speak in this booming voice because he can speak to us in a still small voice, but it will be the biggest you have ever heard if you're listening. The Bible says he leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. There is a calmness there, a peace, a time of reflection. When I sit with God and his word is before me, I can actually read what his thoughts are and what his heart is for me and for his people and what it has always been since the beginning when God created the Garden of Eden and he placed a man and a woman there. There was peace until that serpent came into the picture to steal that peace. But his thoughts are not to do us evil. So we can trust that he will instruct us and guide us to our future. After all, he is the one that began the good work in us. And so he will be the one to be faithful to carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Although we may see evil and that dirty serpent crawling around us to see who he can devour, And when he's out there trying to rob and steal and destroy our peace, we can still have that Garden of Eden experience every day. Look what Job 22, 22, 21 and 22, 22. And you know the 22, the number 22 is, is the Torah, is the Hebrew alphabet. It's the beginning and the end. Wow, that's awesome. Now... And this is, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Now yield and submit yourself to him. Agree with God and be conformed to his will and be at peace. In this way, you will prosper and great good will come to you. And please receive the law and instruction from his mouth and establish his words in your heart and keep them. So listen to his commands and, 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 and obey his precepts. Embrace his truth and don't forget it. Let it abide with you and let it influence your secret feelings and the purposes of your soul. In him, there is a plan. In him, there is a future. God bless. Until we meet again, shalom.